Hi everyone, this is Teal from ProcaBlocks.com. Today I'm going to talk about capacitive and active stylus from the perspective of an artist and hopefully after you have watched this video you will realize how difficult it is to find the perfect stylus for your tablet. Alright, so when it comes down to the different types of stylus, there are generally two types active and capacitive when you're buying a tablet for drawing purposes or for use as a digital sketch pad you should know the differences between active and capacitive styluses because there are some differences that really affects the drawing performance and today i'm going to talk about the different features the pros and cons of each type of stylus I am going to cover a lot of information in this video. If you want to save time or if you find that this is getting a bit confusing, I recommend you check out the article that I've written on my blog. It's easier to read and digest. The link is in the video description below. So how does a capacitive stylus work? It comes down to the screen. A capacitive screen has an electrostatic field and when you tap on the screen with your finger it will distort the field and the processor and sensor will try and figure out where that distortion happens so they will know where you are tapping on the screen and one condition for this to work is the tip has to be wide enough to generate capacitance so a finger is wide enough to do that and that is why our rubber styluses work but styluses with the fine tip they usually do not work well with the capacitive screen so what about an active stylus an active stylus it works with a digitizer screen a digitizer is a special sensor or technology that is built into the touch screen so that it can actively sense for the presence of a compatible stylus by default Almost all touch screens are a form of capacitive screen, that's why they can work with your finger. But not all screens are equipped with the digitizer, so this is an active pen. And when you move the active pen close to the tablet, the tablet will sense that the stylus is nearby and it will show you a cursor beneath the tip. So this is a key feature of active styluses. An active pen and the digitizer technology provide additional features that are just not possible with capacitive styluses. For example, when the active stylus is near the screen, you get to see the cursor. This is the hover mode. And with the cursor near the screen, you can actually right click on a file. If there are buttons on the side of the stylus, you can right click on the file and bring up the contextual menu or with some styluses you can actually flip the stylus around and you will have the eraser mode so there are many different features some of which I'm going to talk about later on these are some of the capacitive styluses that I have I have already reviewed all of them the links to the individual reviews will be in the video description below I just want to talk about the general pros and cons of these styluses now the main advantage is they work with all sorts of touch screen so they are just like a finger you can use them on any touch screen I think the most common one would be um, stylus with the rubber tip so this for example is the stylus with the rubber tip Sometimes you may see styluses with the brush tip as well. Same thing, they also distort the feel, the electrostatic feel on the tablet, so that's why they work. Now, those um, rubber tips like this, they are not very accurate because the tip can be quite big and when you're drawing something like this, it blocks uh, the line of vision for the strokes that are coming out beneath the tip so over the years there's this company called Adonit they came out with this stylus with a disc in front now remember earlier I said that 
you need a big surface area for the tip in order for it to work so this tip here it's rather small but they have this disc so this disc is large enough to distort the electrostatic field on the tablet surface in order to create the lines and it's transparent so it allows you to see through to the lines that are drawn beneath so this is a rather smart design capacitive styluses like this are generally quite affordable for rubber stylus tips you can get them under US $10 for this Adonit uh, Jot Pro it's under $20 and some of these um, brushes they are a bit pricey but not as expensive compared to digital styluses or active styluses capacitive styluses like this they do not have a lot of features you would just use them like you would use your finger and that's about it however there are some capacitive styluses that are digital and they will communicate with your tablet to provide additional features for example this is a digital capacitive stylus it's a, it has a big rubber tip and rubber tip at the back as well this is called pencil that is made by this company called 53 and it's made specifically for this app called paper by 53 this is powered by an internal battery and this battery provides additional features to this stylus you can pair this stylus with your tablet through bluetooth connection and for example when you're drawing like this with the tip tilted down you can get a broad stroke and when you're drawing like this you can get a very thin stroke and when you turn your stylus behind you can get the eraser mode so all these are made possible because of the digital technology that's built inside if you are going to be using a stylus like this there's no way for your tablet to know when you are flipping to the other side or at what angle you are drawing with the stylus so what are some disadvantages of capacitive styluses like this as mentioned earlier the big rubber tip that blocks the line of vision the other thing is there is no palm rejection so when you are drawing something like this for example and you put your palm down on the screen there is going to be stray strokes because the tablet it doesn't know that that is your palm because it's capacitive this is your finger this is the stylus it has no way of differentiating between your finger and the stylus that's why when you put your palm like this and when you are drawing if you're not careful can you see this if you're not careful you will create stray strokes and this is very irritating especially for people who take notes who draw um, when you're drawing something like this when you lift your hand then you realize that hey there are stray strokes over there it could um, damage or destroy the work that you have done so no palm rejection is a significant downside for artists now the other thing is there is no pressure sensitivity with uh, styluses like this you may see that there are some variation in the strokes but actually this is because of the style that is applied by the software it's not because of this uh, rubber tip in recent years there are some new digital capacitive styluses I'm referring to capacitive with quote marks because I do not actually know the actual technology that is used inside but they perform exactly like capacitive stylus that means when you tap on the screen to draw they do give you lines but there is no palm rejection there is no pressure sensitivity now the downside to such styluses is there can be some misalignment problem Depending on the angle that you're holding the stylus and the orientation of the tablet, whether it is in vertical format or horizontal format, that is going to affect the misalignment. So let me try and draw a vertical stroke. I'm not able to draw anything because my palm is on the screen. There is no palm rejection. So as long as my palm is on the screen, I cannot draw anything so I have to lift up my palm prevent it from touching the screen so that's quite irritating when there is no palm rejection 
Now that I've lifted off my hand, let me try and draw a vertical stroke. Check out where the line is coming out from. It's coming out from the right side of the tip. So that's the misalignment problem that I'm talking about. If you draw with the stylus vertically, then it's not so much of a problem, but it really depends on whether you're comfortable or not drawing vertically like that all the time. So I have one straight stroke because of the lack of palm rejection. Let me turn this into a vertical format and show you the misalignment problem again. Now I'm writing in my normal handwriting position. Notice how the lines they come out directly beneath the tip now. I'm actually holding the stylus at an angle, not vertically. This is vertically. And this is at an angle. And it's accurate at an angle. So when this particular tablet is in vertical format, I'm able to get accurate lines. There's no misalignment issue, but when I tilt this horizontally, I get misalignment problem. That is specific to this particular tablet. If you are using some other tablet or some other phone, it's going to behave differently. So you have to try it out. And most of the time, you are not able to try out because you don't have the stylus on hand to try out. So it's a hit and miss with the misalignment. But usually, usually I've tried on many tablets, I've tried with many styluses. It will either work in one mode, it will either work in vertical format or horizontal format, but not both format. That's when it comes down to the misalignment issue. One significant downside of digital styluses, and by digital I'm referring to active styluses as well as digital capacitive styluses. So the downside is when drawing diagonal lines slowly, there is this jitter effect. So it's almost impossible to draw a perfectly straight line. Now you may think that it's because of my trembling hand, so I'm going to use a ruler and draw the same line again. So it's the same thing. So this happens only for diagonal lines, for vertical or horizontal lines. It doesn't seem to affect them. So um, this can be quite irritating if you need that level of accuracy. Earlier on, I mentioned that capacitive styluses, they do not support pressure sensitivity. However, digital capacitive styluses, some of them, they do support pressure sensitivity. For example, I'm using one right now. And if I press down hard, I can get thick lines. I can get thin lines and thick lines. So there is some sort of technology inside this capacitive stylus that communicates with the tablet to uh, find out the exact pressure that I'm applying. All right, enough with capacitive styluses. Let's move on to active styluses. Now the benefit, the advantage of having an active styluses is they are more accurate because when you're in hover mode, there is this little cursor beneath it that will tell you where your line is going to come out from. So this is very accurate. There's not going to be any misalignment issues at all. So you can hold your pen in whatever angle or whatever position that you like. Most active styluses, they support pressure sensitivity. Now this is a feature that is sought after by artists. The digitizer screen is able to register the pressure that you apply on the screen and create the lines with appropriate thickness. Because there is the hover mode, when you see the cursor, you can put your palm on the screen and you're going to have perfect palm rejection. So that is great for taking notes and drawing. With digital capacitive styluses, sometimes they say that they support palm rejection, but so far I have not found any that supports perfect palm rejection. All active styluses, they have perfect palm rejection. As long as you see the cursor, the screen will know that there is a stylus there and it will block out all your finger or your palm touches.
basically the main advantage of having an active stylus is the accuracy that it can provide so it's very accurate it has palm rejection it has pressure sensitivity so when you're drawing the lines will come out exactly where you want them to and it will come out in a style that you want and now let's talk about the downside this is a digital stylus so it has some problem with diagonal lines as well there is still the jitter there the only digital styluses that I know that do not have the jitter problem or where the jitter is not very significant would be the Apple Pencil the Adonit Pixel this is for iPad only and the Wacom stylus for their mobile Cintiq another downside of active styluses is the price this is a digital stylus so it is more expensive compared to those rubber tip styluses however this is not as expensive compared to the apple pencil which is us 100 dollars or even the adonit pixel for ipad which is us 80 dollars the last thing i want to talk about is the support for features on digital styluses now whether or not the features are supported it depends on the app and the OS that supports them for example if you want to customize the buttons on this stylus and there is no driver for you to do so you will not be able to customize the buttons obviously you may be surprised that um, I mean you have a stylus with buttons there should be a driver provided but that is not always the case and also this stylus may have pressure sensitivity but how well it actually works it will come down to the app support how good that app is designed or whether or not you can adjust the pressure sensitivity curve whether you can make this more, sen more sensitive or less sensitive again the driver may or may not be provided with the tablet that you have one important thing to note about these active styluses is they are usually designed to work with devices they are made for for example this is a lenovo active pen it can only work with very specific lenovo tablets and with the microsoft surface pen it can only support microsoft surface product if you happen to have a samsung tab a you may notice that there are two different models of Samsung Tab A there are, the first model is called Samsung Tab A the other model is called Samsung Tab A with S Pen so if you have bought Samsung Tab A without the S Pen and you decide to buy the S Pen later on that S Pen will not be able to work on your device because your device does not come with a digitizer screen so even though they are both called Samsung Tab A's the technology is slightly different in their screens I know I covered a lot of information and it might be a bit difficult to absorb so I do recommend you check out the text review that I've written the link is in the video description below if you want to find out which is the best stylus for the tablet that you are using um, check out the link below so that's all for today's um, video if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comment section below i will try to answer them thanks for watching see you in the next video bye